to my channel my name is Brittany and this is the budget life with Brit. today we're going to be breaking down exactly what is a sinking fund how many sinking funds do i need for my budget binders and exactly how much do i need to put in in each sinking fund if you are new to the channel i want to take the time to say welcome on this channel we talk all things cash stuffing the savings challenges budget finance and more so if that sounds like some content that you are interested in sticking around for go ahead and hit that red subscribe button we would love to have you a part of the community and if you're a returning babe thank you so much for your continuous support all right y'all so we're just gonna jump right into it if you are new budget beginner this video is for you today we're going to be breaking down exactly what sinking funds that you may want to consider into your budget and also exactly how much you want to put in it everyone's budget is going to be different we have different goals different savings have a different budget journey so your sinking funds may be different from other people's sinking funds that's what makes it unique about the cash envelope system so now we want to determine exactly what is a sinking fund basically a sinking fund short term keeping it simple it's like many savings accounts that you use for a specific goal an occasion that may have a time frame that's allocated for a certain sinking fund for example vacation christmas um, emergency fund all those examples you may have an allotted time exactly when you want to save for it these mini savings envelopes is going to help you reach those goals in an um, in a certain amount of time I am going to be breaking it all down exactly what's in my binders what do i have for my sinking funds maybe inspire you on how to pick or how to choose what should be a sinking fund so let's go ahead and jump right in i'm starting the cash envelope system over and so all of my binders are refreshed renewed i have new sinking funds that i have in my my binders and then there's some sinking funds that I've taken out because I haven't reached for some. So you will find yourself rearranging sinking funds as life evolves and as life happens. And that is totally okay because as you evolve, your budget evolves. We're gonna go ahead and take a look into my long-term binder. But Brittany, how do you determine what is long-term and what is short-term? So I have my sinking funds divided into different binders based on the allotted time frame that I have to save for each one. So for my long-term binder, let's go ahead and take a look. So in my long-term binder, I have sinking funds that is going to take a while to save for that is a main priority for me. Basically, my life happens envelope is something like an emergency fund, right? So I have a tracker. This is for my rainy day. If anything was to happen in my life, I have this emergency fund to fall back on. Typically have a main goal of $1,000 in your emergency fund, which I consider an important sinking fund that everyone should have within their budget. Life happens. We want to save for those unexpected expenses. So that is my life happens envelope aka my emergency fund the next one is a cash savings so this cash savings it doesn't have a lotted amount that i want for it in my cash savings just in case i need to purchase something in cash i would consider as just like a small mini savings so i don't really have a determined amount i'm just going to be stuffing as i go so that is going to be a main priority for me the next one is for my kids so i have one for nyla and i have one for sky so these are not particularly like savings accounts because i do have savings accounts set up for them and every time i get paid a smaller percentage go into their savings accounts so this one i have is just in case they may need something so for example nyla she's in in cheer so she may have dues that may be due or um there's maybe things that she will want as far as like some shoes she's a sneakerhead so that would be something that i can take from her envelope as well as sky she's my baby so if we need some extra diapers or 
uh, fall clothes or if she gets any money for her birthday, the same for Nyla. That is something that I can put aside for in here and that we can take as we please. So it's not like a mini savings accounts for them. It's just something, an envelope that is just in case if they need anything, okay? Um, so the next one is going to be for car maintenance, which I highly recommend it to be within your budget. You never know what will happen <laughs> with your car. Unexpected expenses, and you guys know that it can be costly when it comes to repairs, oil changes, tire blowouts, uh, car washes, anything that is associated with your car, your car tags. Car maintenance is going to be a sticky fund that I would consider as a high priority that you want to stuff small amounts into. Now, if you want to set a time frame, like I want to have a thousand dollars within my car maintenance in the next 12 months, you will take that $1,000 divided by how many times that you get paid, you will stuff that certain amount. All right, so the next one is for Christmas. A lot of people um, have a Christmas sinking funds um, that they tend to uh, start saving at the beginning of the year, in the middle of the year, or even you know two months out. It depends on exactly how much you want to spend for Christmas. And you take that total divided by how many times you get paid and you will stuff that inside of your Christmas envelope. So it just depends on the time frame that you have. Example me, I am going to want to save about $800 so I know that I will need to stuff, you know, 20 to 30, 45 dollars until I reach that goal for Christmas, okay? The next one is going to be for medical. Medical I use for deductibles and um, I wear contacts. And so that could be costly. I would like to say, but for that, and I get it every six months. So about $160 uh, I will need to save for in order to be ready to purchase another set of contacts for the next six months. So medical, it can be for over the counter medicines, um, dental cleaning, Copay medical will cover. So the next one is for a vacation. You may want to plan a vacation for next year and you know that it can be costly. You don't want to come out of pocket, you know, two to three paychecks just to cover your your flight, your stay, uh, things that you need to um, need to purchase or anything for vacation. We know that we will want to stay for so that so vacation is another sinking funds that a lot of budgers may want to consider having if you like to take your family to disney world every year you will like to start saving for that so it's going to vary from time to time um that you want to put place a little bit mounts of here and there just to save for vacation next one is for my future envelope so this can mean uh anything in the future it may need wedding puppy or uh, just any future expenses that i would like to start saving for that way when the time comes we'll have money saved up already into my future uh envelope okay the next one is going to be for giveaway the giveaway if this is for my youtube giveaway anytime i conduct a um giveaway on my instagram youtube tiktok whatever that is all that is i consider as a long-term goals that i will continue to stay for that is a high priority for me so that is an example of a long-term binder. Next one is my short-term binder. So this is something that I will continue to take out of, you know, from time to time, more than my long-term binder. My short-term binder is simply just short-term goals, right? So an example, I'm gonna take this out. For example, my debt snowball. So my debt snowball, I like to make small payments every month on my debt, which I have is my credit cards that are left. So I like to make from my monthly credit card payment, then on an additional payment, I get it from my debt snowball envelope. So you may have a debt snowball envelope that you wanna put a little bit here and there just so you can make an extra payment towards your debt. Next one is for my family time. So my family time envelope is just simply that, 
anything that we were wanting to do as a family, like movie time, going to the pumpkin patch, going to the fair. That's my family time, okay? The next one is going to be for date nights. Date nights of with me and my honey can be expensive because you want it to fund for those special nights that you have for your significant other. So that's why I have a date nights. Gifts is going to be anything that I may need for um, a baby shower, wedding, birthday, anything outside my family um, that I need to get gifts for. This is the envelope for that. The next one is for shopping. Y'all already know that sometimes we can go and overspend when it comes to shopping. So for me, I am going to have a singing fund for it. So shopping, it can be anything from uh, me getting fall clothes for my kids or for myself, um, home decor that I may want. I am a decor junkie. I love to decorate my house every season. And so I have a sinking fund for that, just to shop for decor, anything that I may want. Um, so I don't feel guilty because I have saved over time uh, the things that I want. Uh, the next one is going to be for uh, birthdays. So the birthdays. So we have my gift envelope and then I have a birthdays envelope. This birthdays is going to be just for my family only. So for my kids, for my boyfriend, for my mom, any immediate family members for their birthdays, this is the envelope for that. So the next one is for holidays. Simply as that. It can be anything besides Christmas. It can be Thanksgiving. Uh, it can be Valentine's Day. It can be um, St. Patrick's Day. I love to host at my house and so if I need to get some supplies, you know, extra cups, plates, anything that, that I may need for my hosting events, this is the envelope for that. The next one is gonna be for my self-care. Now listen guys, budgeting can be stressful but if you allow it to be, you can have fun when you're budgeting, okay? Make sure that you are taking some time for you by self-care. This Self-care envelope is necessary, okay guys? It is necessary. If you want to get a massage, if you want to get a mani, pedi, uh, if you want to get your hair done, if you want anything that you may need that's going to make you feel good because you've budgeted for it, this is necessary, okay guys? So self-care may be a sinking fund that you may want to, uh, to be able to spoil for yourself, okay? So... That is going to be self-care. Uh, my home envelope. So this home envelope is for anything that I may need for my home. Um, we go, we have a Sam's membership. And so we do bulk uh, supplies for my house. And so the home envelope is exactly for that. So that is a tour of my short-term binder. In which it means anything that I am saving for for short term this is going this is different from my my long term burning because this is my long term goals these are my short term goals okay it is going to be for my bills and challenges so if you guys uh, have not watched my previous video where I'm talking about restarting my budgeting journey I was the type to I have all my bills set on auto pay but now I want to get one month ahead on all my bills. And so my bills binder is going to be just that, right? So when I'm stuffing my bills, what I'm doing is I am taking the total of all my monthly bills, divide them into, you know, how many times I get paid, which is bi-weekly. So let's just say I have rent. So I've already paid October's rent. So now I'm going to be stuffing for November's rent, right? So I am taking the total amounts for my rent, dividing that by two, and that's how much I'm going to cash up for my rent. Um, the utilities is the same. I divide the total, so I take the total of my utilities, divide those by two, and that's how much I'm going to cash up every two weeks. My phone bill is going to be the same. So everything that I I'm going to be stuffing in my bills binder is what I am stuffing for for the next month, right? And then I also have a one month ahead. So one month ahead for me is I took the total amount of my monthly bills and um, that's how much I need to save over time 
to get one month ahead on my bill, which is a high priority for me. So this is maybe something that you want to consider inside of your budget as well, where you want to, if something was to happen, you are going to be covered one month worth of bill. Next thing I have is my savings challenges, which is going to be in this back tab back here. These savings challenges can change from time to time, month to month, okay? So I have a once uh, and a $5 envelope challenge if you are getting started on your budgeting or cash stuffing or cash envelope system journey um and you don't know where to start start with your ones and fives so if you're budgeting your variable expenses which is your groceries your gas your spending your dining out your miscellaneous spending anything like that if you was to have ones and fives left over from those that can be these are the challenges that you can start off with until you are comfortable with adding more savings challenges to your journey right so we got the ones and fives um and then i also have three different savings challenges um you can find once you're getting comfortable with it and you want to make savings a little bit more fun maybe you want to participate in different monthly savings challenges 100 uh, envelope challenge um the penny challenge whatever challenge that you find that fits best for you and your budget so i have a savings challenge that i actually created for myself um, if you're interested, I can put it on my Etsy shop, but this is for my October savings challenge. And I know that I think this is for about a hundred dollars plus a bonus of 120. So I'm going to simply use this for maybe, um, Halloween, you know, costumes for my kids or saving it up for an extra payment towards debt. You can use savings challenges to do that. You can pay off debt to add towards your emergency fund, to add towards your savings, anything like that. Savings challenges are a fun way to help you save a little bit more, right? So savings challenges may be something that you want to consider um, adopting um, as you get familiar with a budgeting and you got the hang of saving you know in your side your sinking funds savings challenges may be something that you may want to add later on okay so those are going to be my savings challenges there's going to be more to come for that sinking funds can be you know different styles of the envelopes it can be zipper you may have seen the laminated you may have seen the peekaboo uh, sinky funds just choose whatever style that best fits you i i did both i did the laminated ones i did the pickaboo ones um the zipper ones i started out my budgeting journey with i, I reverted back to the zipper ones just because I'm, i don't have to worry about the money falling out they they're secure safe in its own envelope and so um i will have these these are linked in my amazon storefront um, the binders, um, you can choose any type of A6 binders. These are considered as A6 binders, which which is the six ring binder here. And then they have smaller ones, which is the 8.7, or they have the big ones, which is the 8.5, right? So find whatever budgeting style that it best fits you and your lifestyle. There's hundreds and hundreds of, um, of budgeting babes that make uh, cash envelopes so check out etsy check out their websites and get really really if you want to kind of spruce up your stinky funds check out those there's some great amazing talented women i just wanted to give you like a quick overview exactly what you may need to uh to start out your cash envelope journey hope you guys enjoyed this video hope that gave you an insight exactly what are sinking funds how you determine how much you place in each sinking funds and kind of give you an example of what sinking funds that you may want to consider in your budgeting journey until next time i will see you guys in my next video bye guys <music>